Hi, in this video let's discuss various salivary glands, their openings and most importantly the nature of fluid being produced by them. The reason why I chose this topic for today's discussion is there are n number of questions from this particular topic in various previous entrance examinations. So first we'll start with major salivary glands. So major salivary glands we have three major salivary glands which are present bilaterally so total we have six major salivary glands so these major salivary glands are usually present outside the oral cavity they present outside oral cavity and their secretions or fluids reach the oral cavity via certain long ducts and the three major salivary glands include parotid gland submandibular gland and sublingual gland right so these are three major salivary glands which are present and the parotid gland opens via Stenson's duct opposite maxillary second molar right that's very important and submandibular gland opens through Wharton's duct adjacent to the lingual frenum and sublingual gland opens through Bartholin's duct near the opening of Wharton's duct right so these are three major salivary glands and their associated ducts and the opening of these ducts is also very important right just keep them in mind and apart from this we have various minor salivary glands also so these minor salivary glands they are present all over the oral cavity that's very important so they are present all over the oral cavity except in few regions so minor salivary glands are common in various parts of oral cavity however minor salivary glands are absent in certain specific areas which include first one gingiva second anterior raphe of hard palate and third anterior two thirds of tongue so these are very very important right so minor salivary glands are absent in these areas or anatomic regions so now let's discuss various minor salivary glands and also the nature of fluid being secreted by these glands so coming to the first minor salivary gland labial and buccal glands so they are present on the labial mucosa as well as buccal mucosa and then we have palatine and certain minor salivary glands are present even in tonsillar area so minor salivary glands present over tonsillar area and these glands are called as Weber's glands right that's very very important so tonsillar area minor salivary glands so they're called as Weber's glands and minor salivary glands present over molar or retromolar area so these are called as Carmalt's glands C-A-R-M-A-L-T-S Carmalt's glands are nothing but minor salivary glands present over molar retromolar area and then we have lingual salivary glands in lingual salivary glands again we have anterior lingual and posterior lingual 
so anterior lingual salivary glands they are also called as glands of blandin and nun and you hn bla din blandin and nun and we have posterior salivary glands posterior lingual salivary glands right and these are called as von Ebner's glands so these von Ebner's glands are present between the muscle fibers and they open directly into circumvallate papilla this point is also very important right so these are various minor salivary glands and these are some of the major salivary glands so usually we have around 600 to 1000 minor salivary glands present throughout the oral cavity and they open via small ducts in the area of vicinity of their location right so now let's discuss another important aspect that is the nature of fluid which is being produced by these glands so for that first let's try to discuss and remember in the following way first we'll discuss the glands which have purely serous secretion and then we'll discuss the glands which have purely mucous secretion and finally we'll discuss mixed glands that is those glands which produce both serous as well as mucous fluid so coming to the glands so it can be either major or minor salivary glands those glands which are pure serous include pp so just remember it as pp pure serous pp where p stands for parotid which is a major salivary gland and the another p stands for posterior lingual glands right so remember pure serous glands as pp parotid and posterior lingual and pure mucus remember it as g p a gpa right so pure mucus gpa where g stands for glossopalatine p stands for palatine and A stands for anterior lingual glands. So pure mucus, remember it as GPA, right? And mixed salivary glands, we have three glands which are mixed. First one is submandibular, second one is sublingual and the third one is labial and buccal glands right so mixed salivary glands include submandibular sublingual and labial and buccal glands let me just write down here submandibular which is a mixed salivary gland we're discussing mixed salivary glands now so submandibular gland which is a mixed salivary gland as you can see here it ends with alphabet r so the next alphabet after r is yes so remember it as submandibular gland which is mixed is predominantly serous right so after r you have an alphabet yes so that's how you can remember this so submandibular even though it's mixed it's predominantly serous and coming to sublingual so the next alphabet after l is m so sublingual gland is predominantly mucus and also labial and buccal glands they are also predominantly mucus so that's how we can remember the nature of fluid being secreted by various glands so let me try to summarize the whole aspect which i have discussed so far so initially we discussed about different set of glands major salivary glands and minor salivary glands in major salivary glands usually they present outside oral cavity and the secretions reach oral cavity via certain ducts and we have parotid submandibular and sublingual major salivary glands and the opening of parotid is tensens duct which opens opposite maxillary second molar submandibular it's wharton's duct which opens near to the lingual frenum and sublingual is Bartholin's duct which opens near the Wharton's duct 
and coming to minor salivary glands we have around 600 to 1000 minor salivary glands present throughout the oral cavity and their secretions reach the oral cavity via small ducts and these ducts open near the vicinity of the glands itself and these glands are present all over the oral cavity except in these regions that is they're absent on gingiva anterior raphe of heart palate and also anterior two-thirds of tongue right this is very important and the various minor salivary glands which are present include labial and buccal glands palatine glands tonsillar area glands which are called as Weber's glands that's important and glands present over molar retromolar area are called as Carmalt's glands anterior lingual glands and posterior lingual glands anterior lingual glands are called as glands of Blandin and Nunn and posterior lingual glands are called as von Ebner's glands and they open into the circumvallid papilla right so apart from this coming to nature of fluid being secreted by these major as well as minor salivary glands pure serous pure mucus and mixed fluid so we have these categories so in pure serous remember it as pp P stands for parotid and other P stands for posterior lingual and pure mucus remember it as GPA where G stands for glossopalatine, P stands for palatine and A stands for anterior lingual and in mixed variety we have submandibular, sublingual and labial buccal glands. So submandibular you can remember it as it's a mixed salivary gland with predominant serous secretion. So we have serous yes. So you can remember it as an alphabet which comes after R, right? And similarly you have sublingual gland after L you have M, right? In the alphabetical order. So these sublingual glands they are predominantly mucus, right? And also these labial buccal glands they are also predominantly mucus. The reason why I chose this topic for today's discussion is there are n number of questions from this particular topic in various previous entrance examinations. So try to master the various salivary glands which are present, their openings and also most importantly the nature of fluid which is being secreted, right? So hope it's clear. Thank you.